Jillian Tett, what is the silo effect and how does it help or hinder me at work? Well, the silo effect is this crazy paradox that we live in a world where everyone thinks they're hyper-connected with cell phones, the internet, airplanes, and yet we, our lives and our minds are incredibly fragmented. And inside many large organizations, the fragmentation is so bad that the right hand has no idea what the left hand is doing. And you embedded yourself into a number of organizations, from Facebook to the Chicago Police Department. So were these silos by design, or were they added on in sort of a Rube Goldberg fashion? Well, here's the really dangerous thing. Most silos exist because people don't even think about the way they classify and organize the world. We become creatures of our own environment. And the problems with that is that you end up both risking big dangers because of tunnel vision, but also risking really big opportunities too. Can you talk about your experience at Facebook? This is a company that had a real entrepreneurial bent, but it's growing. And is there any worry about it becoming something like Microsoft where it got too big and stayed? Well, the key message in my book is that silos are a big, big problem today. But we don't have to just give up and panic. You can do something about it. And the reason why I went to look at Facebook is because they've tried very actively to overcome the problems of silos and to avoid the danger that have beset a company like Microsoft by looking at how they organize themselves internally and above all else by getting employees to think, think, think about the silo effect. And you studied the banks as well. You looked inside UBS. This is a bank which has been hit by a number of fines in the wake of the financial crisis. And in the banks, there are silos by design because you have Chinese walls between investment banking and trading. So can you talk about how the banks have dealt with silos? Because some, some of them have done really badly. If you look at the big banking disasters of recent years, whether it's UBS or Citigroup or Merrill Lynch or AIG, it's almost always because of this silo effect, because you have a small group of people who are incentivized to really only care about what that little team is doing and to pay no attention to what's happening in the rest of the firm. Now, some of these have to be there because of legal China, Chinese walls, but most of the time, the problem with silos inside banks is that there's this tribal um, tunnel vision that besets the bankers which means they just can't join up the dots and see the really big risks that are building in the financial system. And more importantly, they can't see the opportunities. Because the other message of my book is that if you ask why clever investors manage to make a killing in markets, it's often because they've been willing to jump across the silos, to move across boundaries and borders, and to be innovative and take advantage of other people's silos. Silo busting, if you're in finance, can be fantastically profitable. And how does a company which is, uh, has a silo problem, if you will, react when there's an exogenous shock, no matter what it is? is? Is that actually good? It shocks people out of their silos? Well, one of the problems is that companies that have deep silos are often very bad at seeing shocks coming because they've got such tunnel vision, they're just focused on what's in front of their noses, and they can't think laterally and be imaginative. Sometimes when a shock occurs, it creates so much chaos and mayhem that it forces companies to break down the way they organize and to get much more creative in responding. And there are cases where actually silo busting, as I like to call it, has occurred in response to a shock. But much of the time, the companies that actually do badly in shocks are the ones with the deepest silos. And unfortunately, the last financial crisis was a great example of that. And I fear that the next time a financial crisis hits the global system, the companies with silos will come off worst. And then finally, we've been speaking about silos in corporate America, but since we have a presidential race going on, let's just talk a little bit about municipalities and governance and silos. Can you talk about the silo effect and how we can have some better governance in America? Oh, the tragedy is that many government institutions today, and many nonprofits too, are beset by these big bureaucratic silos. And that causes so much waste. And it also creates so many missed opportunities, not just in terms of not bringing the right people in for the job, but wasting money. On the flip side, when institutions begin to think about their silos and try to overcome them, you can actually have some amazing results. New York City Hall is one example of that. I looked at a hospital out in Cleveland called Cleveland Clinic, which has also done some incredible things by actively thinking about their silos. But the key point I want to make is this. Most of us go through life without thinking about how we classify the world and arrange 
the world around us into boxes or silos. But you have to think about it. Otherwise, you end up simply trapped by your environment, you become creatures of the world you inherit. And that means you miss, miss big risks and big opportunities. All right, well, thank you, Gillian. Thank you. And thank you for watching The Street.